If you now go over to remote asymmetric, trans asymmetric functionalization, now you add a different layer of complexity to it because not only you have to have regio selective or chemo selective uh, functionalization, you also have to introduce stereo selectivity. You have to be able to relay or communicate stereochemistry over a longer distance than we normally see. And of course, the challenge is, is the longer the distance between your, stereo, uh, between your stereo center and the site of reaction, the more degree of freedom your molecule will have. So it's very difficult to overcome the conformational flexibility of your molecule. And this is basically one of the best examples to show it and how this can be done. Here's the stereo center, and here's the site of reaction. You have so many single bonds that you can rotate around. And if you count, this is the nomenclature used in literature. It's a 113 relation, so 12 bonds within this. Now, this center you can't control at all. But over here, you have full control of this center. And you start to wonder why. And the trick is, and the trick will be the same in all of the chemistry that I will talk about, is to is to create a temporary conformational restriction. Basically, if you have boosted lithium, you, you will generate the temporary cyclic structures, and through this structure, you will react, and, you will con and in this case, you have your stereogenic center very close in space uh, with the site of reaction, and you have the reaction uh, stereoselectively. So this is basically how it can be done, uh, restriction and overcoming conformational flexibility. If you go over to cal catalytic approaches, it's, e it's even more difficult. And Jonathan Clayton basically s summarized this in one of his review articles, saying that first, I mean, your catalyst, now this is very strictly rigid catalyst, but usually when you add on a catalyst, the catalyst also is also having flexibility in his side chains, uh, so it can also choose another conformation than the conformation you want it to be in. The second thing that Jonathan Clayton highlighted is that this, by using catalysis, the site of activation is usually not that far away from where your catalyst engage with your substrate. So that also puts another limitations on how far you can get using remote functionalization. Uh, so the new challenges achieve activation at the correct site. And one of the problems, of course, that maybe usually you can have activation. Maybe it's easy but you might have only activated, but not uh, stereoselective reactions. Catalyst functions to activate the substrate, but cannot shield or cannot direct approach of your other nucleophile or, electrophilic or electrophile. So this, of course, then adds on top of the regio and the regio selective another layer of complexity. And if we go back to the simple schemes over here about uh, about uh, stereo induction, I mean the arm over here, the longer it gets, the more flexible it will get. Uh, and then the more conformations it can intake, that will just challenge uh, the, the, the effectiveness of the blockage of the, at the remote site. And the same goes for the directing group. So if you go back to the simple cartoon over here, I mean, you might have still have your cow over there, you might still have your road sign over here, but if you have to make your decision of which path to go far away, you might not be able to have the influence of these two, uh, these two factors. And that is really the challenge of remote functionalization in asymmetric catalysis. We started to look into these uh, um, by working with extension of activation modes within amino catalysis. I showed you N-amine activation, I showed you aminium activation, and these are basically logical extensions of that type of chemistry. Now, you extend your conjugated system to alpha, beta, unsaturated aldehyde, you leave, this, uh, car you leave this carbon with one or two protons. This will be able to form dienamine species. You can selectively react at this site. You can react via a type of 4 plus 2 annulation type strategy. You can react across the distal double bond or the proximal double bond, and you'll be able to gain various type of products. And this type of reaction, you can actually control very well. Um, what we were working in back in, to, uh, in the end of my PhD, basically, was to extend it even further. Again, a logical extension of the chemistry that we were talking about, you based on enamine type chemistry. 
you extend it further with another uh, alpha uh, double bond, now you can either have a nucleophile selectively adding at the 1, 6 position. This has been shown that you can do very highly in selectively. You can think about that this can react selectively at the epsilon position very, very far away from your stereogenic center. This is still a huge challenge. And what we were looking into uh, still and at that time was this type of reactivity where you react across the distal diene fragment uh, in 4 plus 2 type annulations. And by this, you can also generate various chiral products. So let us take the chemistry first and then the understanding of, the uh, of why it works afterwards. The chemistry is simply, if you monitor this reaction in an MR tube, this formation of the trinamine is, spon is spontaneous. In the presence of acid, without acid, it goes a bit slower, but you still, go, you still form the trinamine species. And by, in, uh, by adding, this is the first uh, reaction that we published in collaboration with uh, Professor Chen uh, in China you see that you will form this type 4 plus 2 annulation product via trinamine activation. Uh, we reason that it goes through the cis diene. Simply from this, you have a simple rotation. This rotation costs around 10 kcals per mole, so, uh, and which is fully reasonable at room temperature. Um, and upon that, you will have uh, a, an annulation forming your this product. You might also think, and actually one of the referees was asking for that, you might also have a direct addition. Uh, however, if you have, think about having a direct addition, going to this species, you need to first deprotonate to reform your trinamine, then you have to have a single bond rotation, and then a reprotonation, and then you can add. Um, it just did not seem likely because you have so many different steps, so many activations barriers to come across. This only, uh, and this single bond rotation over here seemed to be a more likely case uh, scenario for this type of reaction. And now if you, the good thing about finding a new type of activation modes and you can combine the new found activation modes some, with some other known activation modes and you will be able to generate other type of cascade or domino reactions forming more complex molecules. But this is what we showed simply by, uh, by showing one example where you can do First, trinamine mediated reactions across this diene, followed by enamine addition over there. Uh, and this is simply, look at this. You have two electron poor olefins uh, with this diene now, mix everything together at 50 degrees for, for a couple hours, and out come the products cycle specifically. So no crossover. The ox olefinic oxyindole goes into the trinamine cycle specifically, and this one goes into the enamine cycle specifically. Uh, the, the governing of the stereochemistry at this site is not perfect. It's around 8515, and this center, due to the acidity of the proton, you cannot control. At least it shows the principle that you do not have any crossover of reactivity when you add in two uh, similar electron poor olefins into the reaction. And I've been talking about that this is a curiosity driven research. And it is a curiosity-driven research. But you can also look at it into a different way. I mean, if you think about dienes, activated dienes in, uh, in asymmetric catalysis, you always think about Danishevsky dienes and variants of Danishevsky dienes. There are really not that many other altern alternatives. If you look at this type of diene or form in situ catalyst-bound form dienes, if you look at it to an alternative activated diene species, then it might be also useful and applicable in asymmetric synthesis. And the trick is these type of reactions is really predictable and general. You can do a lot of different type of dienophiles using the trinamine activation. I counted it. I think there's at least 10 papers or more using CC type double, uh, CC double bond as dienophiles. And this is the second article we published on the topic uh, where we use these uh, olefinic aslactones where you form basically amino acid equivalents quaternary situated on a cyclic ring structure, which is pretty, very challenging to make in other ways. And if, if you have amino acid mask, amino acid equivalent, you can always open this. Uh, for example, using TMS chloride methanol, you can form uh, the amino ester. Uh, an advantage of this is that the major diastomer of these molecules is open selectively. So after 
10, 20 minutes, you'll be able to isolate this selectively as the major eye diastomer, whereas the minor diastomer of this compound remains, remains untouched due to conformation, due, uh, due to the sterics. And then you can, uh, you can separate the diastomers, which you could not do at this position over here. And we masked aldehyde group over here by Ramirez olefination due to the instability of uh, the product, initial product. But you can trap the initial product, for example, by ligation type chemistry, simply by adding amino, acid, uh, amino uh, ester hydrochloride salt in toluene with, uh, with a slight heating, you'll be able to form bicyclic structures like this. So the yield is not great, but it's just a show of principle that it's, it's a type of reaction as a diene equivalent in asymmetric catalysis, which has general and predictable reactivity. Of course, if you look at CC, uh, uh, CC double bonds as dienophile, you also go over to CX double bonds as dienophile. And we did it uh, for a long period of time. We were looking into carbonyl compounds uh, or imines and or equivalents. They are very difficult to, to work with in this type of chemistry. And at one point, we went over to look at thiol carbonyl compounds. Uh, and in literature, they are actually described as very difficult substrate to do in asymmetric catalysis because of their inherent high reactivity. They usually react uncatalyzed at room temperature or below, whereas if you want to do heterodose all the reactions with these species over here, you have to use an, a catalyst in one way. The other thing is that, um, is that they are very rarely employed in asymmetric catalysis. And medicinal companies, uh, big pharma companies have looked into the cycloadduct product of thiodules all the reactions and found good activities, uh, but there were simply no ways to make these in selectively using catalysis. In fact, the best attempt or best approach in, back in 2010 using, um, uh, was using copper catalysis with box ligand where the chiral catalyst targeted the dienophile or the heterodienophile and they reacted with one uh, diene whereupon you form this sulfur-derived heterocycle up to 82% EE. But this is only a single entry. If you change the group over here, if you change these groups, then the EE drops dramatically. Our idea was simple. Now we had a good catalyst-bound diene system, which basically meant that chiral catalyst is linked to the diene covalently that makes your stereo induction better, usually. The second is, in the absence of catalyst, you have an electron-poor diene. It will not have reactivity towards the thiol ester. Even if this is very reactive, it will not react with this one in the absence of catalyst. And in the, in, in the presence of a catalyst, then you have catalyst covalently bond to your diene species. So in this way, instead of targeting the thiol compound, we'd go and target diene species. And this is the advantage of this approach that you will be able to have, um, probably able to have better stereo induction of the product. So this is what we did, and we tried. Of course, if you look into literature, you have another problem of chemo or regio selectivity because will it attack the carbon first or will it attack the sulfur first? And there's not many literature reports on ensymmetric dienes reacting with these thiocarbonyl compounds. And in the few cases there are, based on the different substituents, you can have different regio isomers formed. Um, but Luckily or gradually in our reaction, by using this type of dienal with the sal ester, you only form this product, regioisomeric product, selectively. And if you count the number of bonds from the stereocenter to the new, first new stereocenters form, it's a 110 relation. Uh, so 110 relation across the forming bonds, and you form this in moderate to excellent DRs and high to excellent EEs and usually pretty good yields. We did not believe this structure until we saw the final structures, but it really is this one. And we also, in the following, we'll show you some results where we try to understand why this goes through this pro and go to this final product. Um, just to add a layer of uh, applicability of this approach, you can, by reducing the aldehyde group and using very simple transformations without intermediate purification, you can generate 
polycyclic structures containing uh, always contain a sulfur-based uh, heterocycle very easily, and we just showed a couple examples over there. So this was trinamine-based reacti reactivity applied in what we call remote asymmetric functionalization. <laughs> 